since nothing else for me to do. The Redmond Barrens. Run in the Seattle sprawl, and sooner or later you'll find yourself in the Redmond Barrens. It doesn't matter your business, the Barrens doesn't like you. Take one part radioactive wasteland, three parts dog-eat-dog slum, add a dash of tourist trap, and you've got a recipe for mean as hell. You leave the sanitized death and formaldehyde of organ grinders behind, entering the anarchy and desperation of the streets. Jake stops a moment to breathe deeply, filling his lungs with motorcycle exhaust, radioactive dust, cordite, and who knows what else. He exhales with an expression of wry contentment. The stench and grime tell him he's home. And what a fucking home that is. My stash is just around the corner in the alley. Find Jake's stash. Jake's... Okay... Oh, there's a person here. Can I talk to you? Does the bus stop here? Fuck if I know. Uh, that looks like a prostitute. Looking for a date? Elves are my favorite. I'm sorry, you're not my type. Some bums. Oh, hey, a person. Someone named Sarah. Let's talk to her. Sarah, her clothes might be dirty, but this woman is far from downtrodden. Hey, not that it's my business, but I wouldn't go that way. Why? What's going on? Just some Halloweeners stirring up trouble again. She points to the south. They rode in this morning on those fancy bikes. Set up camp in the old mar street market. They've been marching up and down the street all day, shaking down anyone that wanders past. Typical. Well, odds are these are the guys we're after. Sounds like a friendly bunch. Are you going to be safe out here? She laughs. You think I'm dumb enough to get caught out in the open by one of those assholes? Nah, I know these streets are the back of my own hand. Worry about your own skin. Anything else I should know about these gangers? Hmm. Well, the leader's a big old troll named John Paul. Real piece of work, even for a wiener. Yep, that's him. Jake checks his pistol. Thanks for the heads up. Null sweat. I like how he apparently doesn't have a place to live. He just has a stash in, like, garbage. With a smooth hiss, the safe opens to reveal a collection of gear that is a perfect match for your skills. You take the gear. How convenient. Ah, fuck. Hand over that loot, bozos. Ow. Ow! Get fucked. Ow! Why do you hate me? Well, I gained plus three HP after losing like 20. So, welcome to the Barrens. Guess I'll need to find a new spot to hide my gear. Good dread drops are so hard to keep. He chuckles. Well, at least they were too dumb to break my maglock. Now that you've got some gear, let's go deal with those Halloweeners. Do I have an inventory? There I am. <laughs> Don't look anything like this, though. Oh, I can spend karma? I think I'm going to leave it for now. What are you duped up to? He's a human. Disgusting. Look at me. I'm so cute. No cyberware, though. I don't even have a data jack. Um, what's my health at? 28 out of 40. Yeah, I should heal myself. Yay. Alright. Because, guarantee, if I don't, I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> a worried man. The man before you appears well-mannered, but nervous. Excuse me, ma'am, I don't know you, but you look like you can handle yourself in a fight and we need some help. I only fight when I've been paid to. Oh, we can pay you. Some thugs are shaking down the market we've set up here. It's been getting worse lately. I don't think we can afford to pay them forever, but no one will stand up to them and Lone Star isn't about to get involved. How many of them are there, and how much are you paying? I think there's only two of them right now. I can't talk about price, but but Mrs. James will surely reward you fairly. 
Wow. Well, my current client is pretty patient. Where are they? Oh, thank you. Just keep heading north. You'll see it at the end of the street. I mean, it's probably Halloweeners anyway, so... Commerce is like a weed, taking root in the cracks and crevices of the world wherever, whenever it can. A small street market has flourished here amidst the crumbling buildings of the Redmond Barons. But we barely have anything left. Not my problem, pay up by the morning or else. The thug attempts to use his bulk and hideous breath to intimidate the shopkeeper. The old woman is holding firm, but you can see the thug's patient fading fast, and he looks like he's about to start breaking things. Eh, who the hell are you? <laughs> oh, bet your mom's real proud of you right now. Like I ain't heard, heard that one before. I don't see a badge, so why don't you mind your own? Because I'm sick of gutter punks like you. I knew you were just looking to cause static. Dash, ice this lady. Ow, fuck's sake. Bye. Haha, <laughs> get fucked. Why is she running? Oh, that's why, because she's a mage. Oh, that didn't take much. Hi, Mr. James. Time again. I cannot thank you enough. I hate to see such bloodshed, but those men would not take no for an answer. We simply want to make our way in the world. The shopkeeper holds out a few yen. Please, it's the least you can do. I can take it or say keep it, you need it more than I do. No. I'm taking it in the end. I said I wasn't gonna do anything unless I got paid and I'm getting paid. I'm like, you know, not doing well monetarily, so. How's my health doing, by the way? 38 out of 40, that's not too bad. Let's sp okay, let's spend some karma. Thank you. You're welcome. Alright, I guess I have no choice but to go south then. What's this way? Hello. Oh, someone's here. Someone named Vlad. As you approach, the man sizes you up. You can see the age-old flight or fight-or-flight equation running behind his drug-clouded eyes. Beneath the track marks on his arms, he spotted a set of tattoos that indicate he is, or at least once was, a shaman. Hey man, are you okay? Yes, no, yes, no. I saw something. It's gonna kill me. Calm down, I'm Saul. What's your name? My name is... My name is Vlad. Vlad, those are some nice tattoos. Are you a shaman? The word shaman strikes a chord. He seems to shake off some of the mental cobwebs. Yes. Yes, I am a shaman. I thought so. Vlad, what did you see? See, yes, I saw something. The other night, I saw a spirit so dark, so alien that... Vlad trails off and shudders. Where did you see this spirit? Just across the street from the seamstress's union. It's gone now, Vlad. It's not going to kill you. You're safe. F thank you. I think you're right. I feel better now. More whole. Now, I think I need some sleep. Okay. There's a hole in the ground. Don't hurt me. I won't. Cannot save while in action. Can I save now? Yes. Oh, my neck is feeling crunchy today. Watch out for those gangers. I watch out for no one. Oh, I could've just come here. Hey, asswipes, take another step forward and we are gonna plant you right there. This is Halloweener property now. This is one of the two that got away. If I hadn't missed my shot, these idiots would've given up and moved on by now. Wait a minute, you're rolling with Jake? 
Bad idea, chummer. The Halloweeners are collecting that bounty. And killing you? Well, that'll be a nice bonus. Wow. How rude. Why is everyone here so rude? Damn, I keep one-shotting things. Maybe I should have, like... Up the difficulty. Oh well. Amazing. Missed. Why are you coming closer? That's just gonna make you die faster. Line of sight blocked. Nyom. Nyom. Why is my line of sight still blocked? Fine. Oh, hi! Where'd you come from? Ow. What's my... My health is still pretty good. Fucked. Get fucked. Whoa, Uncle, Uncle, I was just playing with you. I'll call off the rest of the Halloweeners, Jake. Call it even, yeah? What do you think, Jake? He smirks. Hey, I'm already at shoot on sight status with these guys. Killing John Paul means one less wiener to shoot me in the back while I'm buying smokes. Hell, they'll be doing the same to you as soon as there's profit in it. I want him to tell his friends what happened here. How naive. Ah, well, maybe it'd be worth it to see him running off this tail between his legs. Bye, bud. Bye. You wanna talk to me, Jake? No? Okay. Is there anything I can grab while I'm here? The answer appears to be new. I don't want to go that way yet. That's where I have to go. Alrighty, I guess I'll talk to Dan the Donut Man. The smell of fried food, powdered sugar, and slightly burnt soy calf is almost enough to overpower the dusty sewage stench of Redmond streets. The troll working the stand is covered in food stains older than he is. But how? What can I get you, chummer? Did you see the murder in the alley across the way? Nope. I was closed when it happened. But hey, it's the Barons. A back alley killing's nothing new around here. The only reason the cops are making a big deal about the ripper business is that some of the victims are real people. You know, folks with sins. What are you telling you about the Barons? The Barons? <laughs> Hell, if you have to ask, you probably shouldn't be out here. This stretch we're on is called Touristville, though, and I suppose it's the closest thing around here to respectable. Fewer muggings, and you might even survive drinking the water if you're lucky. Wouldn't recommend it, though. He scratches his armpit. Now behind me, that's the Seamstress Union. You want drinks, drugs, favors, or information around here, the union's your spot. Hell, that place is the reason I'm in business. Folks get the munchies when they party. Mrs. Kubota owns the joint, and she's quality. A hard woman, but fair. I'll take a jelly donut and a soy calf. Enjoy. See you around. Mission item. I don't know how it's a mission item, but okay. Hi, Bobby. Hey, chummer, got some tasty morsels for you. Just what every well-dressed Shadowrunner should have in her hers back pocket. Let's see what you have. Kamikaze is a combat stim and each oh yeah, drugs. That's not. Drugs are bad. Okay. Mm I don't even watch South Park. Hello, Sally. The dwarf merchant is packing up her stand for the night. I'm closed. Come back tomorrow. 
You got a great view of the alley across the street. Don't suppose you saw the murder that happened there. She grunts. Sure. I was closing up when I heard a series of explosions from behind the Union. A couple seconds later, this guy comes out, runs across the street. Then I got a good look at him. Then all the lights in the alley exploded all of a sudden. Things got pretty quiet after that. And, uh, let me guess. You didn't go running over to see if that guy was okay. Hell no. Round here, that kind of thing gets you killed. Thank you for your time. Uh-huh. No problem. Sounds like a magic thing happened. Why am I tired? I only woke up a couple hours ago. As you approach the scene of Sam's murder, Jake spies the flashing red and blue lights ahead. Whoa, hold up a minute. Lone Star isn't above collecting on a corp-issued bounty, and the one on my head isn't going away anytime soon, he sighs. Sorry, friend. I think this is where our paths diverge. Thanks again for the help of those Halloweeners. Here's your payment. They don't take me and where I'm going, and neither could use the funds. Sure you don't want to stick around? I could use the backup. Sorry, Chummer. Not my style. Besides, you seem like you could take care of yourself. He takes a step, then tilts his head back. Hey, one more thing. When you're done checking out your pal's crime scene, pop up to the seamstress's union. It's just down the street. You need gear, information, or just a damn stiff drink. That's the place to be. Best dive this side of Chicago. I used that place as a base of operation for years back in the day. Make the right friends there, and I'm sure you'll get to the bottom of this river business. Well, nice knowing ya. Jake turns and disappears into the shadowy depths of the Redmond Barrens. Bye, Jake. Hey, guys. Hello, William. The bright yellow police tape cuts through the darkness, directing your eyes to the white chalk outline and dark red stain marking the slab of pavement where Sam Watts died. Standing at the entrance to the alley is a Lone Star officer. The cop looks cold, hungry, and irritated at the homeless man who's currently pestering him. I keep telling ya, I need to get my stuff from the alley or I'm gonna die in the cold tonight. The officer sighs, and I've been trying to explain to you that this is an official Lone Star investigation and I can't let anyone in here. Hey, I got rights. Look, you sinless garbage. I've got a job to do. Find a new blanket, or I'll find a reason to use my stun baton. Typical. I hate all you pigs. Officer Kuprick. He looks in your direction. Now what? Hmm. Ah, that's what it's for. <laughs> Long night, huh? Here's some soy calf and a donut. Hey, thanks! The officer's face lights up as he takes a sip. He seems pretty trusting for an officer of the law. You know, when my dad was a cop, this was back when cops actually worked for the government, he said folks would buy him coffee all the time, but I ain't saying it till now. So what can I do for you? Let's see. I am actually working for the dead man to help look find his killer. Can I come into the alley and take and look around a bit? Or oh, my pleasure. I'm here from Internal Affairs to review the forensic guy's work to find anything. Hmm. 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 I'm gonna lie. Sure, dig in. I certainly wouldn't mind those guys getting taken down a peg or two. Man, do they put on ears if you know what I mean. Hang on, I'm gonna talk to William for a hot sec. The streets have not been kind to this man, but they have also hardened him. This man is clearly a survivor, the one wrestling with the onset of age and arthritis. You, I saw you over there with that rat bastard cop. What do you want? Know anything about the murder that took place here? He squints at you, suspicious. You a copper, or working for some corp? Nope, I'm sinless as you. Mind answering a few questions? Hey, what makes you think I'm sinless? Ha, just messing with ya. Of course I'm sinless. System ID number my ass. What kind of questions you got? <laughs> Did you see the murder? Nope. And I can't say I'm sorry I missed it. I was hauling crates for Mrs. James up at the market. Can't carry as many as I used to, so it took a while. Got back here in time to see a couple of tourists puking all over my home turf. By then, that jerk face in the uniform had already set up the shop in my alley. So, it sounds like you live in this alley? Sure, for the last couple of months I've been sleeping there, but I spent my days out doing odd jobs for the street merchants or panhandling tourists over near the seamstresses' union. 
What else did you see that night? Hmm. Well, you know, earlier in the night, I saw a big and ugly troll in green hospital scrubs snipping around the block. He bought some donuts and two cups of soy cap off of Dan over there. Seemed nervous, and he did everything with his left hand because his right was all screwed up with some cyberware. Can you tell me more about the troll cyberware? Well, it was big. And I think I must have had some hospital attachments because I saw some needles. It was a lot like the one I saw back in 44 when they got captured by elves. They did all sorts of experiments on me. Let me tell you, never trust one of them cyber people. Uh, that's all I needed to know. Thanks. See you around. Amidst the shards of glass from the broken lights, you find a small piece of glass which looks like the bottom of a test tube. This looks like the coat and blankets that the old man was trying to get back. Sam here for evidence. As you shuffle the bundle of cloth to the side, a printed receipt falls from the beneath the folds of the blanket. It's a bar tab receipt from the Seamstress Union, dated two days ago at 3.02 a.m. Right around the corner's reported time of death. The customer, Sam Watts. The server's name says it as Coyote. Pick up the coat and blankets. Crime gained. This work light is new. You can see that all the alley's normal lights have been ruined. Upon closer inspection, seeing they've all imploded as if some force shattered them all at the same time. There are two distinct sets of footprints. A human's, ending at the chalk outline, and a larger set, possibly orc or troll, following just behind the first. I think this coat and these blankets belong to you. My stuff! Mighty decent of ya. Don't see that kind of thing too often out here. You're welcome. Alright, let's talk to Dan. The donut man. I just want to talk to him. You sell some donuts to a troll wearing scrubs last night? Maybe. What's it to you? I sell a lot of donuts. To a lot of people. I know how Lone Star profiles metahumans. I tell them about a troll that bought donuts for me right before the murder. They'll haul him in just to see if anyone will pay the bail. Not today, my friend. Alright. Guess I gotta go into the seamstresses union. Would you like to proceed? Yes. The seamstresses union. Relative to the rest of the barrens, Touristville is a neon-clothed oasis. At its heart is the Seamstresses Union. Housed in an old brownstone building on the corner of Illegal and Opportunity, bums huddle together, gangers strut the streets, and the occasional salaryman comes slumming. <coughs> the Union building has been retrofitted, rebuilt, and restored so many times that it's like an aging starlet wearing too much makeup in an attempt to stay young. The wild ivy growing out of the gutters adds to this effect. As you enter, the murmur of hushed conversations washes over you. The dive bar denizens raise their heads, take their measure, and then go back to their business. This is the kind of place where everyone knows your name, but keeps it to themselves. Alright. Find and question Coyote. Probably oh, no. Let's talk to Cherry Bomb. This is Nerps over there. What does that mean? The bartender is a striking elf sporting a perfectly toned body, perfectly pouty lips, and perfectly tapered ears. Her eyes harmonize, save me and take me in equal measure, hitting just the right notes for the maximum extraction of tips. She looks at you, sees another elf, and smiles big. Hey there, I haven't seen you here before. What can I get you? I found a, b a bar tab with Coyote's name on it. She here. I, I would have figured it would have been a he. She looks around. No, I think she's... Away on business. Business, huh? Is she a shaman with a name like Coyote? She laughs. No, she shot a coyote once. I think it was a shaman who double-crossed her. We've been calling her Coyote ever since. Her face falls. She's been missing since yesterday. Some people think the Ripper got her, but I know her. Coyote can take care of herself. She starts to turn away when a man with the face of a survivor and the zeal of a convert tugs at her arm. Hard. It's clear the two have a history. They try to keep their voices low, but the intensity of their conversation makes them easy to overhear. Cherry, you have to listen to me. If you stick around here, you can end up dead or worse. The Ripper is out here, and he's real. That last killing happened just down the block, and now Coyote's missing. They'll probably find her tomorrow in a dumpster without her head. Come on, Cherry Bomb. Think. 
I think plenty, Shane. I'm getting a PH freaking D from UW in New York Prosthetics, stuttering under Ojamins. And how am I paying for it? Bartending. Tips. There are faster ways for a girl to earn that kind of scratch, but I'm not taking them. So what do you want from me? I want what you want. A better life, a better world for everyone. The Universal Brotherhood can give you that. I've heard this all before. This isn't some trick to get us back together. Things are different now. I'm different now. The Brotherhood. Cherry Bomb's face is pretty hard, armored in lipstick, and low expectations. The Universal Brotherhood is for other people, Shane. Rich Bellevue types who can afford their membership fees and voluntary donations. This isn't about money. It's about binding the world together in Brotherhood. Come with me. Attend a discovery meeting. Get to the core of who you are. I heard Lynn Telestrian give a talk last night called New Family of the Sixth World. I've got family right here, Shane. They're drunks and lowlifes and whores, and I choose them over any of your Brotherhood members. Now buzz, I need to get back to work. With body language that leaves no question that the conversation is over, Cherry Bomb turns her back on him. Sorry, I got interrupted. I heard. He's got the strength of the righteous, doesn't he? Her pretty eye narrows. Be careful about whose conversations you listen in on here. Some folks aren't as friendly as I am. You got a look that says you're not here just for the entertainment. Are you a badge? Do we look like a cop? She flutters her eyelashes. No, baby, you look like someone who knows the shadows. We're trained to spot a bronze the minute they walk in here. Something I can help you with? I have a few questions. Ask away. Tell me about this place. Some come here for booze, some for companionship, others are looking for something they can't get anywhere else. If it's illegal or immoral, and it can be bought, sold, rented, or consumed, you can probably find it here. The union seems to attract people like you. Ever heard the name Sam Watts? She nods. Sam was a regular customer, and a regular pain in the ass for as long as I've been here. Talked a big game, but he was always broke. As soon as he got any money in his pocket, it went straight to his head. Chips, drugs, or booze. Coyote had a soft spot for him, though. Did you see Sam on the night he died? No, that was Coyote's shift. Alright, so who were you talking to? Shane. Old boyfriend. He used to work here. Then one day, he saw a billboard for the Universal Brotherhood, and that was that. Went to a meeting, made new friends, moved in with them. I was happy for him, until he started coming around to recruit me. I don't need that drink. I don't know why, but for some reason, I keep thinking Brotherhood is the people who are like, ah, oh, humans are the best, and fuck all the other metahumans, but I think that's Humanus. Who runs this place? I want to talk to them. That would be Mrs. Kubota. She's in the back room. You can't miss her. Thanks for the Dell. I appreciate the help. Got her punks hat to stick together. Talk to you later. Uh, let's talk to Eric Merceman. That's not how Coyote does it. Okay. Hey, lady, I got some extra outfits I'm trying to unload. You want first dibs? I'll take a look. Oh, man, they look so bad. They look so ugly. Oh, no. So I have, I have samurai clothing. Rigor, mage, decker. The black cat. Clothing for the traditional mage look. Clothing directly for them. Salishid Council. I think. I, I'm pretty sure I pronounced that really wrong. I think those are like. There's a place where, like. It's where elves live. And it's really heavily, like, Celtic inspired. So it's, like, really, like, Irish and Gaelic and stuff. I don't really like any of these outfits. <clears throat> Wee. The Ripper is a lie. I'm not going alone. Okay. Oh, I keep yawning. Looks like these people don't have anything to say. Let's see what this person has to say. Jin Parks. The Asian woman's expression reads, open for business, but her demeanor reads, dealer rather than companion. She has a jack on her neck, a gun on her hip, and a chip on her shoulder. She eyes you with a sneer. You look like you know your way around, need something, weapons, matrix tech. Show me what you got! So I have an AK-97. Submachine gun, shotgun, 
pistol, machete, baseball bat. I, I was like, Dover, I'm like, what? That doesn't look like a dog. And it's like, all right, combat drones. Nah. Maybe later. Hello, Mr. Clue. I want to talk to him. It's so hard to talk to people. He's actually a pretty handsome looking troll. Posted at the doorway to the VIP section is a tower of troll muscle wrapped in an impossibly tailored suit. Whether the product of good jeans or expensive aftermarket cosmetic work, the, the troll's gleaming horns perfectly frame his face, and his polished tusks and goatee accentuate the set of a lantern jaw. Also, um, I don't know, I wouldn't say his horns are framing his face, they're going back. I feel like if they wanted to frame his face, it should be like curling forward in like ram's horns or something. Welcome, please behave yourself. Will do. You get trouble in here often, you must be the union's hired muscle. Funny place for the architect to put a wall. What? I'm just gonna go with them. Will do. Nothing a stern look can't usually solve. You have business here? I was a friend of Sam Watts. Know him? Sure, everyone here knew Sam. Shame to lose a part of the family. There's a sharpness in Cleo's eyes, the look of a man who has seen much and earned wisdom at a young age. I figured Sam was the type who needs to be thrown out on occasion. Encouraged to call it a night, I'd say. Sam was a drunk, but he usually wasn't a violent one. Usually? What about the night he died? He was a bit agitated, didn't catch the specifics, might have been over a woman. Thought I was going to have to show him out, but I had to deal with a couple of rival goat gangers posturing one of the working girls upstairs. Jake helped Sam out instead. Hmm. Oh, is that? Yeah, okay, no, no, he did say that he, had, he helped take him out. I appreciate you talking with me. Happy to help. Nice back here. Hello, Johnny Clean. <laughs> I don't know what kind of name that is, but... The man is dressed like a janitor, but is wearing unusually clean overalls. He's tall, rail thin, and has a cunning look in his eyes that says he's more than just a maintenance man. Howdy, name's Johnny Clean. You knew? I am. I imagine you've seen all sorts of things in a place like this, eh? True. Quite true. And I keep my mouth shut about it, too. That's the secret to keeping a job here, and staying alive in general. Gotta work. See you around. Alright, bye. My name Noog. Covered in glowing magical talismans and fetishes, the troll does not seem fully of this world. He mumbles to himself constantly, apparently participating in several conversations at once with entities you can neither see nor hear. I told you, it's not like that at all. Bring me proof and you shall have it. I am honored, your majesty. Mm. Mother, that's why I was using... I always said to use mustard instead of cat soap. Forgive me, Jean. I was a fool. He looks you in the eye. His other conversation's on hold. You may peruse my magical wares and see their glory. Okay. Unfortunately, I am not magic, so these are all useless to me. Was I shoot Mrs. Kabuto? Kubota. Mrs. Kubota watches you cross the room, sizing you up as you approach. As you get closer, you can see that she's a mixed race, African and Japanese. Her demeanor says, this is my house, and as for that, your peril. But her eyes twinkle with a playful light when she speaks. Kanbanwa, good evening. My, but aren't you the pretty elf? Are you enjoying the seamstress's union? There should be plenty for a woman like you to enjoy. She eyes you closely. Or is this business? I'm tempted to ask what's upstairs. <laughs> Business. I just need a moment of your time, Mrs. Kubota. I have topics to discuss. So, Ka, and why should I help you? Sam Watts. I'm looking for his killer. <clears throat> Her face brightens, amused. Ah, so you are the little insurance policy. He would go on about when he was drunk. His avenging angel who would strike back for him from beyond the grave. What do you want to know? How well did you know Sam? I knew him. We all did. Sam was a regular here, whenever he could beg or borrow enough new yen to become altered in some way. Drugs, chips, alcohol, it didn't matter to Sam. As long as he was bent, he was always looking for his next fix. <clears throat> he clung to this place like it was his lifeline, and we treated him as part of the family, even if none of us truly liked him, except Coyote. Did you see Sam on the night of his death? He was here, quite inebriated as he often was. Coyote was working the bar that night, and she informed me that Sam was getting rowdy and belligerent with other customers. When I requested he leave, he refused. My bouncer, Mr. Clue, was off dealing with another issue, so I requested that Jake escort Sam out of the back door to the alley. 
That was the last I saw of either of them. Um, why is this place called the Seamstresses Union? During the gold rush years, there was a census, and the politicians wanted to hide wanted as high a number as possible to gain po power and revenue. To bolster the numbers, they decided to include all the working girls, of which there were many, to the roles. However, given the times, they could not list the girls' true occupation, so they entered them all as seamstresses. When a girl accumulated enough money to open her own place of business, she named it the Seamstresses Union, so potential workers would know they would be treated fairly there, and thus our rich tradition was born. So you're a former seamstress. No... Perhaps when we know each other more, I will reveal more about myself. For now, enjoy the union. One more question. Can you tell me where to find Kyoti? Her face darkens. Would that I could. I have not seen her in two days. She's a smart woman and quite dangerous, but I fear for her. If she's dangerous, why well, fear for her? Please, if you are what I think you are, you know. There's always someone more dangerous. Her room is upstairs. If you're looking for her, I invite you to examine it. You may be able to uncover her whereabouts. I would not normally betray her privacy in this way, but she's missed two shifts now and cannot be reached on her calm. It is unlike her. If something has happened, I will not have an action on my conscience. Here's the key. Woohoo! Let's go! This is a mid-grade security panel attached to the nearby door. It's set to require a password for entry. <clears throat> Nothing in here, so what was the point? I imagine there's a way to get in here because you can see stuff and I don't think they would have bothered taking the time to set it up if he didn't. Ooh. That's not looking good. Alright. Looks like Coyote keeps her clothes in boxes on the floor. Sounds like me. The stand is littered with action movies and cigarette butts. A framed painting of the Chicago skyline, done in stylized silhouette. Come on. Coyote's bed has a diary with several papers sticking out of it. There's a receipt stuck between the pages and a diary entry. Read the diary entry. I came back from my shift to find four of Paco's goons sleeping on our apartment floor. It's getting fragging ridiculous. I want to be with him, with the real Paco. But this cutter dreck keeps messing everything up. I love him, but he's totally different with the gang. It's how I make cash, baby, he always says. I try to tell him he doesn't need the cash. I can support us both with what I make. The seems just as unique, but he still goes on these runs. With these bozos all over my floor, I feel like he's just seeing how far he can push me before I kick him out. I try to be patient, but why does that have to be all one way? As soon as the last cutter was out the door, I lost it. I told him if he ever pulled directly that again, that he would be sleeping in the alley. Of course, he begged and pleaded with me, telling me it wouldn't happen again. I don't want to deal with this anymore, but I don't want him to leave. He's the reason I got through all that stuff last year, got my bartending license, got this apartment, and this life. I know he cares about me and loves me, more than his involvement with the cutters. I just wish I could slice out that gang from our life together, slice out the fear that comes with it. Spectre. A receipt for a Browning Max power pistol from Gin Park downstairs and out saying how big guns on hot women turn her on. <clears throat> Second paper. The paper has a handwritten poem on it and a diary entry. Read the diary entry. Sometimes it seems like Peko reads my mind or my diary. Maybe he does the latter. I wouldn't be surprised. Hi, Peko! Ever since last night, week, he hasn't mentioned the cutters once. He leaves the apartment with it soon, a few hours, babe, and returns later without comment. I don't know if he's really going to, to help. <clears throat> if it's really going to help for us to avoid the subject in conversation completely, but I've felt better without our constant arguing about it. I should say that Peiko should stick to guns and motorcycles and leave the poetry to others. <laughs> There's a seat and an old photograph stuck between the pages. Picture shows a young girl with caramel skin and dark brown hair. She's a snake wrapped around her arm, yet she is smiling. The back of the photograph has shadow scrawled on it. 
It is COD receipt for a special order. Five pounds of zebra meat from Mari's Meat Emporium located near Pike Market. A receipt for wall safe installed in the bathroom door. Set to a combination of 342436. grenade nice coyote's computer is ancient probably fished it out of a junkyard it doesn't even have a data jack and a crack display is covered with fingerprints tapping the keyboard causes the dust caked fan to spin up only to display on the screen password without the password the only other button on the screen is a password recovery option please answer these three security questions shadow for the, your favorite musical act oh fuck Shit. Did it say anything? I don't recognize any of that. I didn't see anything that would that said like what her favorite musical was. Unless it's Chicago. <laughs> I think that was in the options though. Let's try this again. Concrete Dreams, Maria Mercurio, the Om I don't remember seeing any of these. But I don't wanna fuck it up. Like, I would figure that would be something related to the diary, but I didn't see anything about any of those. I guess Chicago. Damn it. Yeah, I don't know where I was supposed to get that answer. Three days ago, meet with Delilah about gig. Today, meet Paco for date at Pike Mark, Pike Place Market, due in 30 minutes. A quick scan of her recent searches shows that Coyote has been reading a great deal about hellhounds. It also suggests more than a casual interest in vintage action figures. Uh, 
see the people here. How can I help you? Do you know Peko? He's a ganger, a member of the Cutters. He's a good kid in a nasty line of work. I warned Coyote against getting too attached to that type, and they don't live long. Have you heard of Maury's Meat Emporium? Her face twists in disgust. No, I'm a vegetarian. Did you know that Jim Parks sold Coyote a gun recently? I'd be more surprised if she hadn't. Bouncers can deal with more of the troublemaker, with most of the troublemakers, but around here you need a gun just to take trash out to the dumpster. Coyote has a date with Peko at Pike Place Market in the next half hour. If you would go down there, it might be, bring me some peace of mind. I'll call a cab for you. You should be able to get you there in time. Gambate, Kadise. Good luck. Okay, my voice is starting to go. I'm not used to talking this much. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a break. I might come back to it later today. Might be a good time to have some breakfast. I've only been awake for um, uh, almost six hours. So, um, see you soon, guys.